<laughs> All right. So, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Dan Welsh with Surrogate Cigars in Tatawahe. And um, we've got Pete Johnson from Tatawahe, Casey Johnson from Tatawahe Atelier. Um, and we've got um, one of our sales reps, Michael Perales from Impact Force, and uh, Todd McNett, also from Impact Force. Well, what we're doing today is um, the first in a series of Tattoos Day regional updates, we're calling them. And we're just, we're, we're choosing a region in the country. Uh, today is uh, Todd's region. Um, what do we got? We got uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, and South Dakota all represented. And uh, these are some of our key accounts that uh, Todd works with um, on behalf of Mike. And um, we, we just wanted to check in with everybody during this crisis and let them introduce themselves, talk about their stores, uh, talk about their history with Tatawahe, maybe tell a stupid story about Pete back in the day, whatever, um, and or ask questions of, of any of us. So um, I am... Um, I'm going to kind of let, um, how about, hey, Todd, how about, uh, you? do you want to introduce each person real quick? Yeah. And, then we'll, and then we'll just go back through the same order and have, have each person um, uh, inter introduce themselves and, you know, again, go on, go on with it a little bit. So I, I switched back to the, the big view. So we're in, we're in Brady Bunch view on, uh, on the video stream right now. Um, so, no, we're not. Yeah, we are. Uh, now we are. Yes, because it's it's twenty seconds behind. So for all for all of you consumers out there watching, it's twenty seconds behind as we stated before we started. So don't watch it live on Facebook. <laughs> oh no, there's people watching already. So yeah, no, it's behind Perfect. from what, from what we've seen on Zoom. Um, yeah, so Todd, go ahead and run. Run through your lineup there, and then and then we'll yeah. give you guys the mic on speaker view one one at a time. Uh, first, we have uh, James from Burn in Burnsville, Minnesota. Uh, we have Rick; he's uh, up at Tobacco Grove in Maple Grove, Minnesota. Um, Tyler and Matt from Lake Country in Wisconsin. Uh, Chad from Iowa Cigars in Des Moines, and Wild Bill from Deadwood in South Dakota. Awesome, Hopefully guys. We'll have uh, people from Tasting Room on in a little bit. All right. If they join, if they join us, uh, let me know, and I'll I'll get back into this this uh, grid view, if you will. Um, but right now, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch sure back. Will. So whoever's got the mic um, is gonna show up on the feed. Um, you guys are you guys are all unmuted. So if you if you start saying something, it'll jump to you, which is completely fine. But um, we'll give. We'll give each person a few minutes to just talk about themselves, their stores, and anything like that. Todd, who well, you want? Pete, go ahead. I was going to say, let's start with Bill in, in South Dakota to see what's going on with Wild Bill. All right. What's up? What's going on out here? Shipping, shipping, shipping. That's what we're doing. Uh, we've been doing Facebook Live to get more stuff out the door because they closed down Deadwood, the gambling and all that. You can't do it. Can't walk in and have a beer. But you can drive by and buy a growler, so that's how we're staying live every Saturday. You know, keeping the staff employed, keeping them uh, engaged and interactive and creative. That way they don't have to suffer. And uh, hopefully in the middle of May we're opening back up and uh, unleash the dogs of war and and see what the hell we can scrounge up for the rest of the year. That's what we're doing out here. Bill, um, how long how long has Deadwood been there, and especially in its uh, current uh, form? Because I know uh, you, I know you've got a big form. lounge and a bar and all that. Well, I, first of all, perception is an amazing thing because <laughs> it's not a big lounge and it's not a big bar. Uh, we. We do have a big reality out there, out there, but we have beers. We do blues music every Friday, Saturday, uh, decent sized human, you know, we hold our own down here in South Dakota. Um, we get a lot of foot traffic, but it, it's, it all started with Vaughn Boyd back. She opened up the doors when she traveled down from Paso Robles, California, opened up this store July 4th, 2006. Uh, 
she's got a great history. You can go out there and check that out. And then uh, I got off the road of, of, of selling cigars out there and, and took it over about two years ago. And it, it's, it's, as these cats are going to tell you in the near future, it's, uh, it's a different animal when you come on this side of, of, of the fence versus the other side, which I did for a long time. And uh, how you cut, how you light a cigar it, it is an amazing story after you explain the cigar, after they lick it and think it's a, a cotton candy experiment. And uh, they got it all over their face. And then they're like, hey, you want to cut it? And you look at them. And we're a bar, right? So we got music. You got things going on. You got little hotties running around. And they even look at the, their boyfriend and go, why would you give that to him? No, you can't borrow my cutter. But you can buy one. It's just a different animal. So we're having fun down here, staying afloat and uh, doing beer. Bill, Bill, you get so during during the season, especially the summertime, right? You that is, is that your your main go, like summertime touristy season? Nah, that's what everybody thinks, right? But you forget out here in the northern hills, we got we got all the winter tourism you could want. You got tons of snowmobiling, skiing. We're a mile up, so you get all the snow Denver gets. You you know you have a big uh, motocross championship in January that comes into Deadwood and caters. There, there's something always going on at least twice a month all year long. That's, so that's awesome. I, I've been uh, on Todd. I'm, I'm anxious to get out there. Um, Pete, hey. you know, I don't, Pete, you haven't been there, correct? Nope. Tons of history, Pete. Tons of history. Yeah, I know. And <laughs> unfortunately you're just going to have to uh, suck it up buttercup and drink sweet wine when you come out of here. Cause that's what they make. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I bet you have plenty of bourbon there. Uh, I'm good. not worried about that, but I ain't touching that. I'll, I'll touch the wine. I, I was uh, fortunate enough to have some grapes in my life from an old friend, Manny Ferraro. Yes, and, uh, he taught me a thing or two. Not enough, but a thing or two. Bill, wouldn't it be easier if I just bring some of my own wine with me? <laughs> you know, I don't ask, but it, it, if you're going to do that and have an education, that would be something that would be fun. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, it'd be a blast. And there's, and there's we, one day I'm definitely looking forward to getting out there. Well, look, be like like you and I always talk. It's always about history and stuff like that, and that's what's out here. Nothing yeah. but history. So, realistically, if you come out, take the time and and see the whole Northern Hills. That's what it's about. You got Mount Rushmore, Devil's Tower, all the little gambling towns. It's amazing. It's a tourist yeah. spot. Meanwhile, Bill, not to make everybody into a big commercial, but you you have a website, correct? Yeah, right now, it, I'll be honest, it's a uh, shitty one. It's under construction. We're about to relaunch it here in about three and a half weeks. Uh, so, do do people call in a lot of orders there too? Uh, that's what we've been doing a lot of a lot of phone in orders because our, it's under construction and people still use it, but. There's not much up there anyways. Vaughn just used it to launch her own Sweet Jane cigar realistically. So gotcha. the whole thing now, like yesterday, uh, we finished up and, and we did all the surrogate line and Tatawahe line and looked at all the websites out there, and what everybody says a cigar is. And you look at the manufacturer and then you go, these people have bitter coffee range notes to folders to pour overs to all this interesting stuff. So the website deadwoodtobacco.com will be up and live in about three and a half weeks. Cool. I know before we lost, before everybody else was logged in, um, we asked what you were smoking. <laughs> go, go, go ahead. 30 seconds. What are you all smoking, right, Bill? Smoking. It's a espresso uh, bitter chocolate with a hint of, of muddled earth and, <laughs> and a little bit of sweetness. But it's the, uh, it's the uh, 2012 Broadleaf 
and I, I'm not good with Spanish, so Pete can say the name. I won't. Yeah, the Cojonu, and, and and you're one of the few people that I know that actually has some. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got. Yeah, come on, man. Oh that yeah, the, the Broadly oh, version, yeah. especially. The Broadleaf version right now, we've been on back order for that for a while because of the shortage of Broadleaf. So, uh, good to know that someone has them. We do. Yep. And uh, there you go. If uh, if someone's watching and they see that that Bill has Broadleaf Cojonu 12s, <laughs> uh, we might want to give him a ring because I, you're the first person I'm, I'm talking to in a while that has any. So I'm smoking. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, cool. Um Todd, what do we? What about? Let's uh, jump over to uh, Chad and I. Uh, yeah. 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 Thanks, everyone. Uh, Chad Earhart, Iowa Cigar Company. Um, we've been uh, shut down to the public since the uh, first part of April. Um, doing curbside pickup only. We closed our lounge middle end of March uh, voluntarily to the public. Um, and then the governor shut down, uh, I think it was April 3rd or 4th. And that day we had a tremendous day, one of our biggest days ever. Um, customers coming in to stock up, not knowing what they were gonna be able to get for the next three, four, six, eight, ten 10 weeks um, and what it was gonna mean. Um, and surprisingly, we've done exceptionally well through the shutdown. Uh, we've been doing a lot of social media uh, deals, a daily deal, you know, a $40, $50 pack with a, you know, a free cutter or a free lighter or a hat or something. I'm um, throwing some swag in, promoting certain lines each day. And, and what we've found is while our regulars have supported us greatly, we've brought a lot of new people in that want to support local that uh, weren't people we knew. They were in our social media group, but we didn't know them. And uh, those people have stepped up. We've actually sold, I think, three lockers um, to our, our lounge since we've been shut down. These people can't even come in right now. And uh, we only have one left. We have 69 sold of 70. And uh, that'll probably be sold before we uh, reopen. Uh, the governor had a press conference yesterday and extended the closure of business in our county through May 15th. But this morning I was reading the proclamation and there was some language in there that said um, these types of businesses can be open by appointment, no more than 10 people in the store at a time. So I checked with uh, governor staff and lo and behold, we can do appointments. So if you pull up and uh, you don't have an appointment, we can write you in for an appointment right then and there and bring you into the store and you can uh, shop till your heart's content in our humidor. And uh, if you aren't able to come in, iowacigar.com um, you can shop there you can give us a call and uh, we'd be happy to help anybody and i'm smoking actually a 2012 broadleaf as well nice. what <laughs> there you go this is out of my personal collection from home i i don't know think we have any at the store though i only had a couple I've, left at home just dan just so you know i've been muting everybody that's not talking so I can, okay. I can okay. hear, so we can make sure we hear everybody. But dude, that's awesome that you get to make appointments. I think Bill wanted to comment on that one. Uh, go ahead, Bill. You had something to say about that? Chad, how long can an appointment last? And uh, what accoutrements are you offering for these appointments? Am I coming in to showcase a couple boxes, sampling? Uh, can I have a coffee, beverage? How long can I sign up for an appointment? I'm down with that. Well, we can have appointments probably last as long as they can. We just can't have more than 10 people in the store at one time. Right. So you're like the new doctor's office. Sure. Why not? <laughs> yeah. that, that, this is the first I, I bet it, that any of us have heard that concept of being able to make an appointment. Uh, my question was, can I make a lounge appointment? <laughs> Come sit in the lounge? No. No. no, the actually the, the it's clear in the lounge. Private clubs, social clubs are closed, um, okay. and that's what was so frustrating about the uh, her ban when uh, the governor had the the proclamation initially. She shut down tobacco stores specifically, which only really affected about five businesses in Iowa, because all the tobacco huts and outlets and all those people they're classified convenience stores. So they sell bread and milk and whatever else in there, so they all right. stay open and five tobacconists had to shut down. 
but the the rule the uh, proclamation went further to close social clubs and if they were concerned about us having people in the lounge the social club closure would have done that we could have kept our doors open um so I, I i'm hoping and thinking maybe this is a little bit of a correction to help us out because we made a little bit of noise about that well change everybody the landscape has changed everywhere in the country because of of the, the region by region so it's good to see you guys being able to change on the fly being you know dealing with adversity but also you're making it better for yourself your your business models are, are constant in constant movement which is awesome yeah and we've been pleasantly surprised with the support that our local social you know media people have shown up to give us um a guy yesterday said i normally don't come in i buy online but i want to support local uh so we've we're actually almost on pace for where we were last April. Uh, so I couldn't be happier right now, unless the doors were open for people just to walk in and sit down and have a smoke. I, I think it's interesting what you said about uh, guys that were part of your social media universe, right? They're on your Facebook page or email list, but may, and maybe that's because they stopped in the store once, but they're not regulars or whatever. And all over the country, there's, you know, everyone's trying to reach out and, keep their local businesses afloat one way or another. So there, there's definitely a concerted effort out there. Um, but this is a, that's, that's an awesome statement that you're actually seeing them. You know, you call in, place an order, come pick it up, curbside, whatever. Now maybe making an appointment. And, um, you know, when, when the tide changes and your doors are physically open, you know, hopefully you'll see even more of those people, you know, frequent, frequenting the actual stop shop and sticking around for a little bit so yeah that's new that's, that's good the hope. that's the hope and i'll say one of our good customers uh zach murray is following watching right now live and he pointed out to me that i do have broadleaf 2012s at the store so um there you go folks <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that's where the they're all news, the good news is the retail stores have them but we just don't so if you if you're able to find them in the retail stores that that's helpful Todd, who do you want to uh, jump on with next? Why don't we go to uh, James? James and Byrne. James and Byrne. How are you, sir? Good, how are you? Nice to join you. everything in your world? Is that why it's dark in the store? No. Or are you trying to hide out? Because Dan made me change places so I could hear me. <laughs> <laughs> Took me an hour okay. to get that set up just right. Yeah, no one has, not everybody has a studio like Dan. <laughs> hey, now, now we can see a little bit of your store, though. Yeah, true. Uh, I'm James Sucho with Burn Premium Cigars uh, in Burnsville, Minnesota, the South Metro. Um, I don't know what day we've been closed, but we're closed. Um, April 4th. We just found out from the governor's uh, news conference today that we'll be closed until April 4th. Um, we were. Or, or April 4th, we closed on April 4th, and then we may have an opportunity to open up again for curbside only in May, first part of May. But other than that, we're closed. Um, most of the time we spent in the store putting in a contingent plan if we're gonna open on a Monday, if we're gonna open on a Thursday, you know, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna reach out? Um, been able to talk with some of the other retailers in Minnesota, especially Rick from Tobacco Grove and Todd and just trying to share ideas and spending most of our time filling up government paperwork. And there's a lot of it if you go after, try to go after everything that's out there. So, um, so James cur curbside is, is down. Like you're not allowed to, you're absolutely not allowed to do that. Yeah. In fact, when the governor when the when the governor opened up golf courses and uh, and landscaping crews, right under his order to open those businesses, there was a line in the order that said tobacco stores are not exempt, so we had to remain closed. Um, and it is what it okay, is. Okay, so James, James, you're not so you're not allowed to do any shipping either. I, Pete, I don't know if. They, did, they haven't said we couldn't do shipping, but it's never been a very big part of what we've done. 
you know, up until they changed the tobacco tax in Minnesota to 50 cents, we've just never been able to carry enough inventory to satisfy, um, you know, a, a current stream of online customers. I've got a customer of mine who's uh, stuck in Arizona was, and we've been shipping to them. And, and, and that may, if there is any gray area in Minnesota right now, that might be it. Um, we've come in to, again, fill out some paperwork or do some cleaning and, and making sure humidifiers are working and you know, all that kind of stuff. But other than that, and, and I'll stop by and drop something off the mailbox, but even that might be gray area in Minnesota. Um, and we're sensitive. Uh, we, we like the tax situation here in Minnesota right now. And we're doing everything we can to support what the governor's asking um, us to do and how he wants us to participate as a business in Minnesota. And, and hopefully by follow, following all his guidelines and not having any problems, we'll be, be able to be open for curbside. I mean, we were, I mean, we were wiping down cell old cigars. We were wiping down bags. We left the chair out front, so you'd have to call us, give us your credit card over the phone. When we got there, we'd walk it out, we'd set it on the chair. You'd get out of your car and pick it up. So, I mean, we weren't within 10 feet of a customer. I've got a couple of my, one of my guys is in a higher risk, a higher risk category for Corona. And, and when we all came together, when this first shut down, we put in the most stringent um, guidelines we, we thought we could to protect us. If we were protected within the store as a staff, you know, anything we were doing would be way more than what we've been asked. I mean, if you've been to a Chipotle lately or a Noodles, you know, there's still six, eight, ten people in line at some of those stores, you know, and they're not doing curbs, you know, they're not doing true curbside. So we're, you know, we're going to hang in there. Um, things are okay today. Um, I'm smoking something out of the, I, the, whatever the hundred box collection was called. I, I love it. They call it the, the uh, treasure chest, but. That was uh, the, uh, the broadleaf collection that came oh, out. You're smoking broadleaf also. <laughs> I see a theme. <laughs> I see a theme. I got, I, a whole, a theme I, got a, I got a whole handful of them here. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we're smoking. This is what we're smoking all afternoon. So the staff hopes this goes about five or six hours. <laughs> you're you're going to have people you know, knocking on your door here in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, from that from there i'd like to hear uh, rick's take on on his side of the town because i know you guys are a little far apart but you work closely with each other so uh i'm curious what uh what the deal is over at tobacco grove yeah we're we're completely open uh people can come in you can <laughs> and hang out and everything I mean, it's <laughs> sales right now they're coming up from burnsville so it was fantastic right now <laughs> <laughs> uh, joking, so, are you? <laughs> everything. Only, everything uh, this is live, right? I it is. This is live. It is. Okay. So apologize to the governor now. Go ahead. Yeah, no. You know, we um before when he when when the governor this would have been in basically towards the end of March uh, basically ordered the bars and restaurants to do switch to curbside. We actually switched to curbside as well at that time. Okay, so we were not allowing anybody into the store, um, just having people call ahead, get their orders ready, run it out to them, you know, very easy. Uh, it, it was a way to make sure that the, the product, you, you, the integrity of the humidor safe, keeps the staff safe, et cetera, which we thought was important, especially to the customers in this time as well. And, um, and then he shut everything down basically at the very end of March. And my understanding is we're really waiting until May the 4th, May the 5th is when we can hopefully get back to something. Um, we've got ourselves a couple, you know, a couple phase plans for depending on what level we can open up. If it's, you know, really what we're asking for at this point is curbside to go. Uh, there's zero reason, zero reason why we should not be able to be curbside to go. You know, I'm over at uh, Total Line which is less than a half a mile from here. And I'm just sitting in the parking lot watching hundreds of people walk in and out of there, in and out of there, grabbing cigars, grabbing booze, what have you. But we can't even come in the store and fill online orders. We can't come in the store and just do a simple curbside to go. It's, it's ridiculous. I'll tell you what, Rick, the, the Total Wine, they, they've got no broadleaf. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I, I have to say it because you mentioned it. So, like, you know, ho hopefully that will work out. So, may the fourth be with you. <laughs> okay. I'm done. 
we kind of okay. switched things over real quick to, you know, we just tried to figure out how can we try to still engage our customers on a social level. You know, a big part of the, the experience at Tobacco Grove, and I know all these other sh stores that are on here, is that social aspect that you get, the camaraderie, you get the family that you get. Um, that's why we started doing the Cigars from Afar video that, you know, we did with you guys, um, which, by the way, we posted that up on YouTube, and you guys have the most amount of views of any of the other companies that we've done, so nice work. Um, but, you know, just those little things that we can do to still reach out, engage all of the customers, um, and then just prepare to get back to curbside to go as soon as possible. So. Hey, uh, Rick, someone just asked what town you're in. Maple Grove. Oh, oh, wait, do they have a... Uh, someone on Facebook was asking, so... Okay, okay. Just want to make sure it's not from the governor's mansion, so... No, okay. no, no, it's a... <laughs> this gentleman's so, a regular Rick, client, actually. Ma Ma Maple Grove is a suburb of Minneapolis, and, and James at Burn is also a, another suburb of Minneapolis. It's basically we're northwest of Minneapolis by about 15 minutes northwest of Minneapolis. So, Rick, did you try doing any, any like, shipping yourself, or did you just shut that down also? No, this is live, right? So, no, we did not <laughs> do any shipping whatsoever. Well, I haven't even looked at a cigar. Um, dude, I, I, I'll tell you, it's a gray area for everybody. It is. I mean, you know, one of the things, though, you have to look at is, you know, part of this, the stay at home order is, you know, we do have perishable product here and that does need to be checked on on a daily basis. Um, you know, the, the way it's set up here in Minnesota is that every type of retail store falls under a certain code, right? And unfortunately, tobacco, the code that that falls under is non-exempt, okay? So we're just operating on that. We also took the time that we said, what can we do in the store? There's so many projects that we were able, that we've done, you know, uh, new point of sale system, you know, new, new painting, new counters, you know, all this kind of stuff yeah. that we can do right now, new air handling that we can do when no one's in here to make those upgrades because we know it's going to get back to normal soon enough. So. Yeah, right. Well, hopefully. Uh, that's a, that's great. Uh, we've we've seen multiple accounts that are doing internal upgrades, air handlers, flooring, painting, like you said, um, and then just just real quick, Rick and um, uh, James, both um, your history with Tatawahe goes goes back for both of you guys quite a while. Um, James, you you wanna you wanna comment real quick, and then and then Rick. Well, yeah, we. Um... Before I got into the cigar business, I was a cigar fan, and I've you know been an SNS member since day one. I think there was a hiccup in email changes or something like that. But and you know on a, on a social level, we host, we have been hosting um, the SNS members from the area every year for a uh, SNS club too. So we go, we've gone back, and you know as soon as as, as soon as um, Todd came on board from Impact Force, um, we've seen more activity with all their brands, but especially yours. Last year um, was a big year for us with you guys, um, being one of the unlucky 13 and, and some of that kind of stuff. Everybody got to come and visit the store and we got to, we got to answer that age old question, where the hell did this guitar come from um, <laughs> when you were there um, that Pete has in his office now. but. Um, yeah, we've been a fan from day one and you know it's we love we love the product we love what you do um i actually got to spend some time at i think it was the ipcpr back in the day sat in the circle bar with you guys and pete leaned over and said are you going to the big smoke tomorrow night and i said no i didn't get a ticket and he took my name down and and uh i got to walk by the 1500 people in line and put the vendor pass on and walked in and Ran around and traded La Raquizas for wine the rest of the night for Pete because he was the only one in his booth. So um, I always loved the product. I've always been a fan of the product. And now getting, you know, behind the counter and getting to do stuff um, with you guys for our customers has been phenomenal. That, we, love we appreciate it. No, that's, a, that's awesome. And Rick, Rick, before we go over there, James, real quick, um, cigars and baseball. That's that's uh, taking a year off, correct? Yeah, I did with with the, the they actually moved the event back to where it originally was to include a baseball game this year. And with the Twins, 
because Mr. Detlison, Kirk Detlison, the guy who's behind it, is the largest single, largest individual season ticket holder for the Twins. So without that connection, they're, they're going to, they had to postpone it for a year. But Cigars and Baseball is, a, is, a, is an event that um, does exactly what it says, Cigars and Baseball. Right? You go down before a Twins game, there's a giant area for cigar guys and vendors and food and all kinds of fun stuff. But the cool thing is, and when I originally talked to Dan about it, the money goes to, um, the money that's raised goes to making um, baseball fields for children with disabilities. Uh, and I was, I was a little, I was semi-skeptical, you know, and, until one day I went and saw one. And I pulled up to the I pulled up to the the field and I closed my eyes and and you could hear kids laughing and the sound of bats and when you opened up your eyes it was kids in wheelchairs and kids in in uh, with dis with disabilities running around and playing a game that I played when I was a kid and loved so I've always had a soft spot in my heart for um, the baseball um, I love the sound of kids la laughing and and parents cheering and and I think it was a really cool idea, and I'm really glad you guys were supportive of it. Uh, I got to stand in the booth last year in the rain and hand out Tatawai cigars, and and I would do it again. If, <laughs> I would do it again every year in the rain if, if that meant the money went to the kids to build more fields. There's, there's a couple of them in the Twin Cities now, two or three. Um, but it's – I can't say enough about it, and it's getting bigger and bigger all the time. I think it's 800 people now, up to 800 tickets. So they bill it as the largest cigar party in, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, it's been cool. cool. Yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the story I wanted told was about, about the charity itself. And that's the story you first told me that teared, teared me up when you were telling me. And I, I remember telling Pete about it as well. And um, so it's, I, I, it's, it's, uh, it's sad that it's uh, off this year, but um, hey, let's, Maybe we, maybe we dream up some other promotion that can raise money for the same charity over the summer, you know, even, even just through your store. Yep. Sure. Yep. We'll do that I'll offline. I, I, again, well, I'll talk, yeah, I'll talk to Kirk and I got a couple of, couple of his board members or customers of mine so we can float the idea around and just see what sticks. Awesome. And Rick, Rick, you go way back with uh, Tatawai as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm actually smoking the, the new TAA, the new Sumatra wrapper. Oh, I, right I was gonna, I was gonna say, and you're a TAA account, correct? Yes. Oh go ahead. my God, is this good? And I'm not seriously. I'm not just saying that. I'll be honest about whatever cigars I'm smoking. If I like them, this thing is. I've already smoked six since they've come in. It's crazy, Joe. <laughs> right. Phenomenal. You're supposed to sell them. I know, I know, I know, I know. And don't. Yeah, get but he's he's closed right now, so. Yeah. Don't get high off your own supply. I know, but um, <laughs> no, they're really good. Uh, yeah, I remember back, I remember doing the, um, I, God, I remember back doing the Halloween event for, um, uh, we were one of the unlucky 13s for when the Drac was out, and when the Boris came along with that as well, and I remember how fast everything sold out online. I remember the original Tatuaje Petite Black Lanceros, and, you know, how fast those things, it just gone. You know, instantly. I mean, we open it up online, just gone, all of them. Uh, and then we just spent the entire day just processing orders, et cetera, you know. Um, but uh, I remember everybody digging into their Tatuaje box, trying to see if they got that little Nosferatu, you know, thing to win the motorcycle or whatever, you know. And of course, none of, none of us did, you know, but it was super. <laughs> hey, Pete, yeah. Pete, Pete, real quick, if you want to tell anybody that's watching um, the stream or – um, afterwards, um, what the TA project actually is, because we've got we've got uh, Tobacco Grove, and then we also have Lake Country coming up. That yeah, oh. that would both have that prod product, it's, and no. people might not be associated with that. Yeah, the, no. the products uh, the products already out there. Um, uh, many of the retailers that uh, were open or willing to take it during this time. Uh, took their allocation, but it's a five and five eighths by 54 uh, soft box press Sumatra. It's a medium to full blend that's uh, a little stronger than the normal TAs over the past years, but uh, it pairs really well with the uh, Sumatra. The packaging looks cool. It's different than the other ones too. 
Yeah, it's my 10th anniversary of doing the uh, the TAA. And uh, it's a project that, you know, a, a good chunk of the money goes back to the, the organization. But uh, this this is actually possibly my last big release of it. So this release was 3,000 boxes. Um, I think next year, if I do one, it'll probably be shifted down to about maybe under a thousand, uh, because I'm, I'm looking to shift gears a little bit towards the PCA to raise some more money towards, uh, the CRA and, you know, raise more money for litigation against, uh, you know, the FDA. So, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a great cigar. I, I'm, I'm really proud of it. I've actually, I taste tested it with a bunch of guys, uh, a bunch of SNS guys down in uh, Nicaragua this year before we even, uh, finished packaging them, but, uh, everybody was pleasantly surprised by it. And, uh, I'm very happy that it's on the streets now. I just wish it was in a better time. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're, they're going to sell regardless. They're all going to sell. So it doesn't really matter what's going on in the world. It's a phenomenal cigar. As soon as people can get their hands on it, it's, it's, it's going to sell like crazy. Well, James and Rick, I hope you guys get back to normal soon. It's, a uh, it's tough to see, uh, you guys having a kind of, shut up uh, shut up shop completely it's good that you're taking the time to to maybe clean up the place or put in a new counter or paint the walls or whatever you, you can never you can never make your store better and you know you just keep on bettering your your, your establishment it makes people want to come back so we appreciate uh, that as a client uh, you know as a as a supplier to you guys that you guys actually uh care about that enough to uh push forward so i appreciate what you guys do yeah, let's uh Let's go on to, um, uh, go ahead. So, so someone who said that, oh, I was, I was going to say, oh, let's go on to Lake country. Was someone else saying something? No, I was going to, I was going to unmute Lake country so they know that they can say hi. There you go. Hello. Hey everybody. I'm Matt Matheny from Lake country cigars uh, and we're located uh, about 20 minutes west of Milwaukee. It's a little town. Um, We've been here 20 plus years, uh, have had Tatuaje uh, in our humidor since, uh, since I think Tatuaje was a thing, since I first heard about them. Um, we also have uh, 2012 uh, Cajonu, all the wrappers on the shelf. <laughs> so come get them. Uh, they're great. Um, they're all in my territory. Yeah, so, uh, so uh, I ran this place for probably the last uh, eight years or so, and then uh, um, fulfilled a, uh, a dream and was able to buy it uh, almost a year ago now. Um, and, uh, and we're doing great. It, it, like I said, it's a dream come true. So, um, Well, I, I, you know, I'll, I'll say something about the 2012 and I thank you for carrying all three wrappers. Um, I think it should, it's one of those cigars that should be a staple in a lot of cigar stores for the sense yeah. of it's, it's a good teaching machine. It teaches, uh, it teaches people that are looking for a style of cigar, let's say they're medium to full or full bodied cigar. It gives them an idea to taste three different wrappers on the exact same internal blend. So it really helps people understand what a wrapper, just a change of the wrapper could do um, for, you know, any, that cigar. So I appreciate you guys carrying all three of them. Well, we appreciate it too. Awesome. <laughs> um, I don't know what else I, I, I can say. Um, so right now, the way we're doing business, um, last Friday, our, our uh, safer at home um, order was, was due to, to be lifted, but they of course extended it um, to the 26th of May. Um, but all along, um, so I'm someone who does uh, wholesale. Um, obviously someone else had mentioned it's perishable product. You gotta be here every day. Uh, so I am here every day. Uh, so for <laughs> for a while, um, because I came in every morning, um, I was kind of operating under cover of darkness. Um, but as of as of the twenty fourth, uh, uh, one of the things that the the governor put in his report was that non essentials could do curbside, um, could at least have their open sign on. Uh, so as of Friday, I, I've had that on. And if you come up to the front door of Lake Country Cigars, just pull on it, come on in. We'll consider it an appointment. We'll get your damn cigars. 
we ship them to you too. Uh, we've done a lot of that. Um, not only because, uh, because of the situation, the Corona situation right now has shipping gone up, but um, Tyler, who's with us as well, uh, working his other job, and I, I say working, <laughs> he's, he's been someone who's, uh, since I've purchased the place, he now works with us. He's a good friend of mine. Always wanted that to happen, so we made it happen. He's. Uh, if you don't know Tyler, you must know the one puff review guy. That that's Tyler. So, so everybody uh, knows the yeah. rules. Yeah, everybody knows the rules <laughs> uh, except Tyler. And, and so uh, we've been able to do a lot more um, shipping the product because he's been promoting stuff uh, via social media and putting packages together and, and whatnot. So we've been doing a lot of that as well as uh, walk in business. Um, and we've taken, right. like other people have said, we've taken the time to make upgrades at the shop, um, clean it up, throw a bunch of stuff away, which is great. We did the same thing in our office, actually. I mean, once this happened, uh, we, I don't know if everybody knows, but we work on a skeleton crew also. I mean, normally our crew is very small at the office, but, uh, you know, Andy's there in his own kind of little pod that he, he works in. And then Tony comes in a couple of days a week to ship. And then after that, uh, our other packing guy comes in a couple of days to pack. So as, as far as exposure levels to each other, they're, they're very distant from each other. And it's, uh, and we, we took the time early on to clean up the whole office. Uh, I've never seen, I haven't seen the floors in our big room at the office in a long time. And now on the camera, I can see the whole, <laughs> the whole floor spotless. So pretty cool. Yeah, that's one of the things that I did here was take everything out of the office and throw it away, start start fresh. Um, but I remember, so I've had the opportunity to meet Pete uh, a few times, and I remember uh, one of the first times we did an event here at the shop, and then we went back to my house. I'm sorry about the phone. As you can tell, I'm in the office right now, and we're, we're doing business. Someone, someone heard you had Cole New Broadly. And they're right. probably calling you. <laughs> well, whether that's what they're calling for or not, that's what they're going to get. Um, <laughs> but, but I remember uh, having you here at our store and then going back to, to my house. We had a little after party. It was in September. It was hot as hell. I can, I, I can remember that. But the first time you came in here and I was talking to someone else, I heard you say something to, to somebody else. And I thought, who, who the hell invited Seth Rogen? Oh, <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> Hold on one second. Chad do, you, Chad, do you have to leave? I do, actually, yes. Well, okay, so let, let have, let's have Chad get, take a spotlight real quick. But, uh, Chad, if you have anything, any advice to give to anybody that in the other group, in this group that's that's got their store during this time and, and even a, a good idea, uh, maybe something you've implemented in your store that they might, they might want to implement in theirs, um, well, I, the I, certainly wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't uh, act as though I know more than some of these other tobacconists that have been been at this much longer than I have. You know, we I always say the people that work the hardest have the most luck, and uh, we've been working really hard to try to attract new people while we've been shut down. Uh, as I said, uh, been doing a daily deal, you know, a special, and we limit it. Uh, Todd was helpful on on uh, one promo we did, um, you know, we say we had 10, 10, 10 four packs and you get a free hat or something else with it. And the price is this, and then just number them off on Facebook and people just number one, number two, number three, number four. And you get 10 of those for 40 bucks a pop and it's $400 in the drawer that day. Um, so we've, uh, we've been not that we're social media experts, but we've been trying to be creative and Charlie, my business partner, um, he's there and runs the shop every day, uh, doing a fabulous job and in, in, uh, ensuring we have deals and making sure people can uh, can get some cigars. So um, just be creative and, uh, like I say, work hard. Those that work the hardest have the most luck, and we seem to be having that right now. Oh, good luck, man. man. Yeah. Hey, hey, for, hey, Chad. Thanks for I, what you're I, doing. Thanks for coming on with us today. Chad, yeah. I, got, I got one question before you go because I, I was about to ask Matt the same thing. Is there is there anything in cleaning up your humidor you found that you might have put on one of those social media things or kept for yourself that you were like, oh my God, I don't remember that I had that? 
Well, we bought what was Pars and Cigars two years ago, uh, and we renamed it and rebranded everything to Iowa Cigar Company. And I know, uh, Todd, you've been in there, and Bill, you were in there many times uh, before you crossed over as a store owner. Um, there was a ton of inventory. I mean, this you, you guys would all be dumbfounded at the inventory that we had. And uh, I did have some that I'd set aside, some probably 13, 14 year old Camachos that I had in the back. And we, we threw those into a deal just to get people to, uh, you know, entice them on, on, on one deal and uh, sold a bunch of those and got rid of some. And I was going to smoke them, but I was happier to sell them. So um, yeah, we, we found, we found some good stuff, but we've, we've worked through most of that old inventory that we had. Uh, but we do have all three wrappers on the 2012 as well. Um, we have a K222, J21, a uh, number of reservas, um, tattoos, and we have a great, great representation of Tatuaje, and we appreciate the, the good product that you guys put out for us. So I'm thinking we, I'm, we appreciate that, man. And, I, and I'm thinking tomorrow's social media deal is probably going to be one of each 2012, <laughs> plus maybe another cigar or two, right? Sounds That's great. Charming, uh, yeah, we could probably do that. <laughs> Well, Chad, uh, Chad, thank you very much. Thanks for coming on and spending this uh, hour with us, um, at least getting your message out and telling people about your shop. Uh, All right. I'm sure people in your local area appreciate it. Yep. And we Take appreciate all yourself. you guys. Keep working hard. Be safe. Right. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thanks again, Chad. See you soon. Bye. -bye. Thanks a lot. Uh, so, so, Matt, same question back to you. Um, cleaning out that humidor, did you find anything that you were like, oh, wow, I either want to keep that or maybe that would, be, that would make a nice sampler. We'll put that one up. Yeah, well, we're continually finding stuff like that. You've, if you've been to our store, um, it was overloaded with product too. But since I, I, I purchased the place a little less than a year ago now, we did a lot of that uh, then, like throughout the sale. Um, a lot of that got cleaned up, but we do run across stuff. Um, I was always looking for stuff, hoping for stuff that, would, that has fallen behind or whatever. Uh, a lot of that gets smoked, I'll be honest with you, but because, um, you know, it's onesie twosie stuff. Um, but if we find boxes and, and whatnot, yeah, I'll put it, I'll put it out, you know, and say this is vintage or because it is. Um, but yeah, we found some, some stuff. And that recently, uh, as you know, uh, We've, we've brought on a lot more tat stuff, especially surrogates stuff. We're doing really well with the AKC. We're doing um, the whole line. Um, and uh, just to say a little bit more about the shop itself, we do have a, a general lounge, a, a member's lounge, and a patio. Um, I always think of Bill when I go out on the patio because uh, uh, you walk out there, it says Drew Estate right on, the, right on the floor of it. He helped us out a lot with that when he was our Drew Estate rep. And, uh, sent us a bunch of stuff, and it's good to see Bill. I haven't seen you in a while. But, uh, yeah, I mean, come out to Lake Country Cigars. Like I said, uh, just tug on the door. We are here. We are selling cigars. Um, if you haven't been here in close to a year now, which I'm always surprised, there's always people that come in and they're like, wait a minute, this, uh, this isn't the same place. It's really not. It's, it's a little bit different, but it's uh, the same space. Um, but we've made some upgrades to it. Very cool. Hey, hey, Tyler, you got anything to say on that? I was just going to yeah. say, let's, let's introduce Tyler and his, and Tyler, like talk about Lake country, but also go ahead and put a plug in for your one puff reviews, bro. Yeah. So, oh, he um, yeah, yeah. So you're talking about some like the vintage stuff. What I think, um, what I like that we're doing still is we're still ordering a lot of the new stuff. So, you know, we have the, um, uh, uh, we just ordered a little bit more of the Tatuaje, uh, Petite Corona, the black. So we, we were getting more of those in. You know, we're, we've been, I think we've gone through almost 20 boxes of the AKC. So we're still ordering new stuff. And, like We're shipping stuff. If you need to ship anything, you can um, instant message me on uh, Instagram, the, uh, um, the Retro Hail on, the, on Instagram or the <clears throat> Facebook page. We have two people who watch that. We're getting more but, um, the good thing we've been doing is a lot of cleaning. Like um, we have a full timer, Jana, who still comes in every day and and vacuuming. And um, 
cleaning the windows and scraping the floor and she did the whole office. There was so much crap in there and I got busted taking a lot of shit out of the garbage for that I wanted to keep <laughs> some of the old signs and shit. But um yeah, I mean just hit us up because we should we've been shipping a ton and we're still ordering new stuff. We're still bringing on any new stuff where I'm excited for the new stuff you guys got coming out that Kruger Monster Bomb Squad. I'm stoked about that. And then uh Anarchy and uh the new size of the series P. You know, so we're still ordering all the new stuff. So we have all the old classic favorites in Tatawahe. We still got some cohetes and stuff like that. Um, so that's about it. Very cool. Well, yeah, it's good because you're, you're Tyler, you've been around for a, a little while uh, and you're very active on social media and you have your, your one puff uh, review. It's, it's actually, we have a few cigars in our portfolio that if you know about them, you're able to order. So you obviously have been doing your research. So, yeah, well, um, that's what I like about, uh, what you guys have been doing and, and Todd with impact force is you guys have been very approachable doing the zoom hangouts and Todd, me and Todd talk almost every day about, um, what's going on, how we're doing. So I, what I appreciate you guys just didn't forget about us when all this stuff went down, you're still reaching out, you're, you're reaching an audience and, and I'm learning a lot of stuff. So, uh, we appreciate that for sure. Appreciate you. Well done. Todd, uh, do you have anything to say about your, your clients that have been on here today? Here, hold on. I got to unmute you. Oh, <laughs> go, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just going to say uh, just a great group of guys. Um, as you can probably tell, um, everybody watched and I mean, Pete, Casey, Dan, they know them all, but uh, the group of guys that do business the right way and carry great selections of cigars, very knowledgeable, not just guys that just sell cigars, but, you know, if you ever really want to know about the cigars, they're, they're the guys to see. And, uh, yeah, very supportive of us and the brand, too. Yeah, I mean, the reality is we probably could have had a lot more people on this today, but uh, uh, we're, tr we're testing the waters with this experiment, yeah, I think, as I think Dan said. Safe. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, thank, thank so you to everybody cool. that's watching for bear, bearing with us because this literally, this literally is a first try for us. And uh, again, we want to do this every Tuesday, but, and, you know, do a different region on all that. But uh, yeah, this, again, this is the, this is our first try. And um, I, I appreciate what everybody's, uh, what, what everybody's put out so far. Um, everybody that's still on, um, anybody have any questions for, Pete, Casey, or I, um, that you want to share? Hey, Bill, I actually unmuted you because I was going to ask you a question. Aside from questions, uh, again, you've been you've been on both sides of this uh, world. I've I've done a lot of what you've had to do over the years. Um, obviously, you did the rep game a long a lot longer than I did. I just tested it. Um, but do you have any advice for the other retailers right now, or any retailer that might? might not be in this room, but maybe out, outside that maybe you can help them with a couple of words of wisdom. Metrics <laughs> off of Facebook. Don't use it as a, uh, a tool to sell as much as how to layer what your social media and, and what your content material is. Uh, when you look at manufacturers, their message is often per quarter, meaning their social media aspect, their print media, and, and their message from the rep is all the same message. So watch your metrics. They'll show you where your audience is. And then you can craft emails to them based on their weather. You know, obviously the Midwest is, is a lot of coldness right now, but California isn't so if you're reaching out to Cali or Texas you know you got different lines you can push different sizes you can push to that region not just what you're smoking up there in Minnesota or Wisconsin or Iowa even um, and that's what we've been doing is watching where the people come from looking at their weather and seeing how we can target specific sizes to them versus missing a sale by just trying to throw a touchdown pass Right. More targeted for the audience. There, Bill. Bill, that that that's kind of awesome, right there. Like that's that's not a 
that's nothing I ever thought about. And I know Tyler is sitting there going, hmm, that, that sounds great to me. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's great advice. You'd be surprised yeah. where people come from. I mean, they can come from, you can't ship to Canada or Australia or, or England, but you, you'll be surprised the more solid content you put out there and, and pay attention to when the views drop off, where they come from. You'll learn how to target that message in a much more formatted uh, segment versus pulling things from all over the place. Very well, cool. and I honestly think I honestly think that you and Todd and Pete actually come from the same being. You've gone back to retail. Todd switched over to the other side. Pete came from retail, so you guys share a lot of the commonality. Then it's it's a, it's a great thing. Um, I think the forum's really a good asset i want to do i do want to thank um mike for being on also because uh mike mr p and he was, yeah he brought he brought on todd and todd's been a godsend for that area he's much been needed and uh todd knows the business inside and out and he's going to help Hey, Mike, 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 do you have anything to say? I was just going to say, Mike, you want to introduce yourself and uh, talk about your other regions real quick? Because hey. I, kn I know we'll, we will be featuring one of them soon. Yeah, we're going to be looking at some of the other regions to do this. But, uh, you know, being in this business for, for a long time, I look at it, and this is definitely a challenge that I've ever, never, never seen before. And being through a lot of up and downs in the, the business, um, you know, they're – early 90s and you know the 2000s and 9-11 and all the other stuff you know trying to maneuver to stay in business it's always been a challenge but this is definitely different this is something that is challenges all of us you know in our business and recently and in, in our offices personally you know um, we got to get through it that's all we have to do is concentrate and we have a lot of retailers that carry the product and uh that really believe in a product and we do enjoy doing business and it's always a treat to find uh, companies that always are concerned about the consumer than just selling cigars. And, uh, this is one of the companies. So, um, you know, boutique, there's a word to say boutique and this is definitely a company that's boutique and, uh, it looks to reward the customer coming in buying this product. So that's, uh, that's all I have to say today. Hey, so. hey Mike, I'm gonna Thank I'm gonna you throw much. you I'm gonna throw you under the bus, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna recover from it. For for everybody watching, Mike is the oldest person on this call. <laughs> I'm next. That's why I threw you under the bus. Secondly, though, the, the, my right. my recovery is Mike. Mike, you have been in the business longer than than any of us, and um, I know you haven't seen anything like what we're what we're facing right now. But I mean. We, we all look to someone like you to just, you know, for advice in that, in that general aspect. Like you, you've seen a lot. What, when, when, when did you start? It's been now over 30 years. And uh, I look at it, uh, like I said, uh, when it was in that, those days, they used to do the, even the big sh the shows at the, in the hotel rooms. And uh, there was only a handful of people. They used to get together at the end of the show and sing around the piano and uh, Abo playing the piano and <laughs> the Fuentes and all the family members, everybody was there, you know, it was like a group of people. And now it's become a major business. And like I said, you don't get many companies like this and still believe in boutique and to take care of their customers. You know, we don't overload. We could probably open a lot more doors, but you know, we take care of the customers who carry this product and, uh, and we hope that they always reverse that they take care of us to, you know, that this company is always behind their back and uh, seeing this business, the way it is change with not only with this, that we we're dealing with, but with the federal FDA regulations has made it tough to conduct business, but we have some really good people out there. You know, they, the new, the new smokers that are coming up, you know, I'm always glad to see, I'm not, saying that you know it's your individual choice to smoke but it's always good to see a young smoker and uh enjoying a cigar you know and uh again it's just stuff like that you, i take more 
pride in seeing the, the little things now today than I did in the past. It was always moving and going and moving and going. Now I take a little more time and look at things in a different perspective. So, have you have you yeah. seen any other scares in the industry? Was nine eleven, nine eleven, right after nine eleven, you people weren't selling cigars for like thirty to forty days. It like really slowed down. It was spooky slow. You know, it was like never heard. You know, never saw anything like that where it was just like like everything stopped. And then after, you know, after that, it got back going and it will get going again. I don't believe it's just going to, you know, we will, we will get our, we're, we're get, we'll get the consumers back in the stores. So it's, it's an old cliche, but adversity makes you stronger. And I think, I think this will make the business stronger, especially with the, the, the uh, retailers uh, kind of bonding together and working together and the manufacturers. I think this will, will better us down the road. I agree. I, I agree, Casey, and and I will add that the consumers right now are are very special in my heart right now because of what they're doing for their local B and M's, which is again a message that we want to put out there. I mean, every everybody's been right. stepping up. Yes, right. They've been buying gift certificates or popping in the store for curbside. It's 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 very positive. Yeah, kind of like what Chad was saying. Kind of like what Chad was saying, that he actually sold lockers to people even during this time. Yeah. He can't even be open, but the, his yeah. local customers are, are buying lockers just to help support their favorite place. I think that says a lot about the community. I mean, you talk about the cigar community. I think it's one of the best things out there. And you go back to James's uh, cigars and baseball charity. Uh, I think a lot of people outside of our industry don't understand how caring this industry mm. is. And that's where our battle is with uh, things like the FDA. They just, they see, they see numbers and they, they, they're not looking at it. Even the real numbers, the real numbers are in a, in a different side of the tobacco business. We're a small mm -hmm. percentage of what they're talking about. Right. Yeah. I, I, I completely agree with that. Um, Pete, I want to, I want to let you put one plug in because you mentioned charity. I want to put, let you put a plug in for, um, for hand rolled the documentary. And then also, if you could address just briefly the word boutique <laughs> and what it means in our world. Yeah, I, okay, so Hanrold, obviously a documentary that uh, we produced uh, a few years ago. Um, it's been on, available on iTunes, Google Play, and uh, Amazon Prime for the last, what, about a year? And... Uh, you can rent it on one of those platforms or even buy it. I think it continues to spread the message of what the community of cigars is all about. Uh, it's not, we're not part of a, a, the, the other sector of tobacco. Um, I think it's a necessary thing for everybody to watch. And if you're a tobacconist, I hope that you share it with your, your customers uh, because a lot of people who just don't understand what we do for a living or what we do every day uh, when they see it for the first time, they kind of get a, a slight hint of uh, what we're all about. I, Bill, I think you wanted to jump in on there. Yeah, we saw that here at Deadwood Tobacco. We already watched it. And uh, cool. it's a solid piece. And I did see Thank some you. fancy lighters. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody had a fancy lighter. That's yeah. a fur. Oh. I, no, I'm, no, actually, actually, all those lighters, like you got to remember, I, I, a lot of, uh, a lot of the props in the movie were my personal items. Uh, <laughs> um, hey, hey, Pete, tell, tell, tell him, and all, tell like, him the about the red lighter, too, the, the Opus X and everything. All those Opus X were either out of mine or Andy's stash, uh, <laughs> just so we could have a variety of Opus X to show on film. Uh, so I, even my office was used as part of the background of the, of the, uh, of a few shots in like the Grand Havana room in Beverly Hills, which is currently closed along with the Grand Havana in New York. Those were uh, film locations and also recording locations where we recorded the narration for the film. So we, we asked for a lot of favors. It was good. We saw it. Thank you. Uh, boutique's tough, man. Uh, Dan, um, I would say as a company, 
my my kind of touch that we're boutique in mind. Maybe as far as size, we're not so boutique. Uh, but when you look at individual brands within in the line or within the under the portfolio of Tatuaje, I would say almost every brand is boutique because the quantities of cigars that we make uh, per per size sometimes um, are so small that you know normally that would be that would be nothing for even a boutique manufacturer to make. Uh, sometimes some cigars are made, you know, in between 7,500 and 10,000 cigars a year, which is really small production. Um, and if you look at the comparison to like limited editions that the, a country like Cuba does, I have a plane going over me. Hopefully you guys don't hear it. Um, there was a cigar that was made for the Spanish market in Cuba, limited edition, and it was 500,000 cigars one size like so i mean honestly 500,000 cigars if you can if you can have a business where you actually sell 500,000 single units of the same cigar um that's a that's a business for most people first of all but that's not boutique uh so i look at boutique as as uh as quantity but also uh state of mind so in in the state of mind, we're for sure boutique because we we look we look smaller than bigger. But I agree, and I, I I wanted you to explain it a little more because people people tend to to jump on that bandwagon of Tatuaje isn't boutique anymore. They're they're a little bit bigger company, but I always stand on the platform of any of our lines. You were talking about sizes, but even any of our lines, I will argue on any soapbox that any line is completely boutique take any any one of our brands even miami brown label by itself the numbers you can you can talk about you know miami brown label because all these retailers are miami brown label retailers yeah i mean we we have 10 rollers uh that roll in miami sometimes 11 depending on uh, the the demand but because we have one one gentleman that works in the packing department for the Garcia's packing boxes to, to send out to the retailers. Um, on occasion, he'll sit down and roll cigars also. Um, yeah, I mean, the brand, we, we do about 400,000 cigars in Miami, but that's over a broad portfolio. And uh, right. some some cigars are, you know, some single units are, again, rolled 7,500, 10,000 cigars. Some are actually rolled 2,000 to 3,000 cigars a year. Um, yeah, the Reserva A Uno, the the A size brown label. Yeah, how many we, ten we count rolled, boxes? We rolled, uh, I think, about 150 boxes last year. Not and, a lot, and and we during this during this time, uh, we actually have one roller uh, working by himself in that gallery in Miami uh, that normally holds 10 or 11, and uh, he is actually rolling the the A Uno right now just to fulfill, you know upcoming orders because we, we've been out of them for a while and and our biggest seller out of miami is the grand kohonu the big six and a half by 60 um and those are in 12 count boxes and even that size is tiny in comparison yeah. and and that's that's a cigar that we have one permanent roller on that cigar and then we have a we have another roller um that does part-time work on that cigar because that she, the roller who does the part-time work on Grand Colonus, she normally rolls uh, double Coronas or or she'll roll the uh, the big Figurados like the RC 184s or the 233s, and she does a lot of specialty items. The, the gentleman that's actually in the factory right now that does uh, that's doing the the A Uno, he does a lot of uh, uh, custom stuff for me and specialty items. He's doing all a lot of the uh, Escaso series. But also the uh, he does all the Lokis. He makes every one of the Lokis, and we actually pay him a little bit more to roll less per day because we want every cigar flawless. That, and I believe, and I know Tyler smoked him. I believe that cigar is flawless. That that that's one of the reasons I wanted to bring that bring that up, not to turn it into a Tatawai commercial, but literally to to you know put that point out there that you know. This is, this is still a very small company. And by supporting all of these retailers that we're talking to, you're very much supporting us as a small company as well.
Anybody, anybody uh, in the group have uh, any other questions for, for Pete while he's on here, especially? Raise your hand or if I can unmute everybody, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we can, do a, yeah. we can do an unmute all for right now. Everybody's unmuted. Um, Except for Tyler. I don't know. Yeah, oh, no. I, I, I actually too. accidentally muted him. But uh, <laughs> I wanted to say something in a group. Um, we appreciate that, that you guys actually take the time to care about the products that we make. Uh, obviously, we make um, cigars, everything through the Garcia family. And when you're supporting us, you're not only supporting us, but you're also supporting them as a great family in this industry. And uh, they, they really appreciate it too. So thank yeah. you for that. Yep. Definitely. Well, you, you guys, this, uh, this has been a great first effort at doing this. Um, and I, I hope, I hope whether you share it um, or whether people just stumble upon you guys that, that you get new customers out of it and get a new appreciation, new appreciation for, you know, the situation that we're all in. And, and even when we're not in this situation, what we do on a regular basis. So, um, I, I thank you all for participating. I'm going to, I'm going to click on end this on the live stream. Um, so everybody wave on your way out. Thank you guys. Remember to support your brick and mortars guys. <laughs>